BestBookBits.com presents Thinner, Leaner, Stronger. The simple science of building the ultimate female body by Michael Matthews. If you want to be toned, lean, and strong as quickly as possible without crash dieting, good genetics, or wasting ridiculous amounts of time in the gym and money on supplements, regardless of your age, then you want to read this book. In this book, you're going to learn something most women will never know. The exact formula of exercise and eating that makes losing 10 to 15 pounds of fat and replacing it with lean, sexy muscle a breeze. And it only takes 8 to 12 weeks. This book reveals things like the 5 biggest fat loss myths and mistakes that keep women overweight, frustrated and confused. The real science on healthy fat loss that makes losing 1 to 2 pounds of fat per week not only easy, but guaranteed. The horrible lies women are told about how to tone and shape their bodies and what you really need to do to have sexy, lean curves. How to develop a lightning fast metabolism that burns up fat quickly and leaves you feeling full of energy all day long. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of Thinner, Leaner, Stronger. Michael Matthews' Thinner, Leaner, Stronger begins with a straightforward promise. No matter how bad you might think your genetics are, no matter how lost you might feel after trying and abandoning many types of workouts and diets, you absolutely positively can have the lean, sexy body that you dream about. Unsurprisingly, his book is a collection of common mistakes and busted myths supplanted by relevant sets of laws and rules which, if strictly followed, can lose you 10 to 15 pounds of fat in a breeze and get you that Hollywood babe body in no more than three months. Matthews believes that achieving this is not nearly as complicated as the fitness industry wants you to believe, and that it is precisely because of the fitness industry that many women have problems changing their bodies the way they like to. Seems like a great place to start our summary, doesn't it? When the myth brings you money, print the myth. I'm going to tell you something that the kings of the multi-billion dollar health and fitness industry don't want you to know writes Matthews at the very beginning of Thinner, Leaner, Stronger. You don't need any of their crap to get into shape to look better than you ever have before. Meaning, you don't need to starve yourself with super low calorie diets. You don't need to constantly change up your exercise routines. You don't need to grind out hours of hours of boring cardio to shed your ugly belly fat and get lean and toned. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars every month on supplements or fat loss pills. You don't need to completely abstain from cheat foods. Then why do so many people around you do all these things? In one word, money. Simply put, when people are willing to spend money on certain types of products or pieces of advice, then you can be sure that there will never be a scarcity of new cutting-edge things for them to empty their wallets on, and there will always be scores of brilliant marketers inventing new schemes to keep people spending. The truth is rather brutal. Fitness magazines, for one, don't want you to lose weight and get into shape of your dreams, because then you would stop buying them. What they want you is this, to buy not just them, but also the supplements they advertise, because that's where they get their money from. To top this, personal trainers are really fitness experts, because all you need to do to pass the certification test is memorize some basic information about exercise and nutrition. Also, they never gave students nutritional advice, even though that amounts to four-fifths of the equation for a great body. The 8th biggest muscle building myths and mistakes. As a direct result of the above, 9 out of the 10 people you see in the gym lifting weights don't train correctly. How would they? They are usually doing nothing more but following worthless programs found on the internet or in magazines, or maybe not a very few functional exercise routine prescribed by their trainer. Chances are that you have probably fallen victim to one or more of these false pieces of advice at some point in the past, and that you're currently doing pretty much the same i.e. playing the game of no gains, or in the best case scenario, the game of slow, stubborn gains. Well, Matthews would like to speed up the process for you by first busting the 8th biggest muscle building myths and mistakes. Let's hear it, Michael. Myth and mistake number 1. The lies of toning and shaping. No matter what you do or how well you do it, you will never change the shape of your muscles. It is determined by genetics. Hence, the claims that some exercises create long, lean muscles, while others result in bulky, ugly muscles, is a myth, unsupported by any known science. Whether you do yoga or weight training, the shape of your muscles will remain the same, and the only thing that will change is their growth. Weight training, of course, grows muscles faster than yoga, which in turn makes them more flexible. All in all, you can have sexy arms and shapely legs, only not the very ones of your favorite model. Myth and mistake number two, lifting weights will make you bulky. 
This myth is already addressed in number one, but Matthews is so irritated by it that he feels the need to repeat it. Unless you're a genetic freak, he writes, not only won't you get bulky from weight training, you couldn't even if you wanted to. Your body simply can't do it. It lacks the hormones and genetic programming. Myth and mistake number three, the more you exercise, the better. Exercising too long on a daily basis leads to overtraining, which in turn makes you lethargic and gives your body too little time to repair your muscles. Consequently, this can sometimes cause you to lose muscles and hold on to fat. The optimal time, 45 to 60 minutes of workout per day. Myth and mistake number four, you have to feel the burn to get bigger and stronger muscles. When your muscles are burning, what you're actually feeling is lactic acid building up in your muscles, and that may not be as bad as it sounds, but it is not good either. Not to go into detail, it certainly means that you're doing yourself more harm than good. No pain, no gain. One of the worst fallacies out there, according to Matthews. Myth and mistake number five, wasting time with wrong exercises. If you're going to the gym to improve your muscle tone and get stronger, then you need to know that this requires three simple things. Lift progressively heavier weights, eat correctly, and give your body sufficient rest. The most effective muscle building exercises are known as compound exercises because they involve multiple muscle groups and include squat, deadlift, and bench press. Isolated exercises such as cable fly, dumbbell curl, and leg extension, which involve one muscle group only, are little short of wasting your time. Myth and mistake number six, training like an idiot. Unfortunately, most people don't have a clue as to the proper form of exercise. And this doesn't merely hold back their progress, but it also opens the door, debilitating injuries since it causes unnecessary wear and tear on ligaments, tendons, and joints. Don't be that idiot. Exercise only what science says is helpful and beneficial. Myth and mistake number seven, training like a wussy. Okay, this is the other end of the spectrum. Training without pushing yourself forward, that will, of course, never work. Even though evolution works against you when it comes to your perfect body, everyone avoids discomfort in favor of pleasure and ease. If you decided to go to the gym, then you need to put in the effort, especially when it's difficult to do so. Myth and mistake number eight, eating to stay weak or get fat. As we've said above, exercising is merely one part of the equation. The other is nutrition. And even the women who know this are way, way off when it comes to eating properly. If you don't eat enough calories and get enough protein, carbs, and fats throughout the day, writes Matthews, your muscles simply don't grow bigger or stronger. It doesn't matter how hard you train. If you don't eat enough, you won't gain any muscle to speak of. The opposite is also true. If you eat too many calories, eat bad carbs and fats, and don't know how to portion and plan your meals properly, you can gain muscle, but it will be hidden underneath an ugly sheath of unnecessary fat. The real science of muscle growth. Congratulations, you've just learned how to do it wrong. Now it's time for the more important part. How do, how do you correctly go about building your muscles? By never forgetting and always adhering to the four laws below, because as Matthew says, they are as certain, observable, and irrefutable as those of physics. The first law of muscle growth, muscles grow only if they're forced to. The first law of muscle growth is one that needs explaining rather than merely stating. In other words, everybody knows that muscles grow only if they are forced to, but very few people know why. Matthews explains. It's rather simple, really. By lifting weights, you're actually causing tiny tears, i.e. micro tears in muscle fibers, which then your body repairs so that it is better prepared to handle the stimulus which caused the damage in the first place. Consequently, if you're not producing micro tears in your muscles, your muscles won't grow since they deem themselves adapted to your current needs. But just as important, if you're producing too many micro tears in your muscles, then your body won't be able to repair them, and this will hinder your muscle growth as well. For optimal muscle growth concludes Matthews, you must train in such a way that causes optimal micro tearing, and then you must feed your body what it needs to grow and give it the proper amount of rest. The second law of muscle growth, muscles grow from overload, not fatigue or pump. As we said above, the feeling of burning in your muscles is not synonymous with muscle growth. It's actually just fatigue in the form of too much lactic acid. Consequently, the burning sensation is not an indicator of optimal workout. It's oftentimes quite the opposite. The same holds true for the pump you feel when training. It is merely the result of blood being enclosed in the muscles. And while not bad, 
it's also not the primary driver of growth. What is then? Overload. Overload always gives muscles a very clear reason to grow, which means that plain old heavy weightlifting is the best workout for muscle growth known to man. And contrary to what many trainers and magazines say, you don't need to change your routine every week or two. You can do the above every day, and the results will inevitably show. The third law of muscle growth, muscles grow outside the gym. If you understood well the first law of the muscle growth, you already know that muscles actually grow outside the gym. Inside it, you're merely creating the micro tears, which your body needs to repair while resting afterward. It is this repair the thing we term as muscle growth. Consequently, working out too much doesn't do any good, sleeping eight hours a day after exercising for no more than one does. The fourth law of muscle growth, muscles grow only if they're properly fed. Even if you do the perfect workout and give your muscles the optimal amount of rest time, if you don't eat correctly, your muscles won't grow bigger or stronger, period. Simply put, writes Matthews, your diet determines about 70-80% to 80% of how you look, muscular or scrawny, lean or flabby. Precisely because of this, instead of summing up the main points of the book, we've opted to share with you a few more nutritional related insights from Thinner, Leaner, Stronger in our Key Lessons section. We know you won't mind. Key lessons from Thinner, Leaner, Stronger. Number one, the five biggest fat loss myths and mistakes. Number two, the real science of healthy fat loss. And number three, setting fitness goals to motivate yourself. The five biggest fat loss myths and mistakes. Just as there are muscle building myths and mistakes, there are myths and mistakes related to burning fat as well. Matthews dispels five of them. Number one, counting calories is unnecessary. Of course, it's pretty essential to count your calories if you want to get fit. If you want to lose fat, your body must burn more energy than it receives through your food. And the energy potential of food is measured in calories. Consequently, any more calories than you can burn throughout the day results in more fat. It's that simple. Number two, do cardio equals less weight? Not if you're eating too many calories. Cardio enhances fat loss, but only to a certain point. If you eat 600 calories more than you need, jogging will burn only half of that, and you'll still gain fat at the end. Number three, chasing the fads. The Atkins diet, the paleo diet, the wild diet, the bulletproof diet. Well, how many diets are there, you wonder? Well, the truth is there's only a few rules. See next lesson, and everything else is just a fad which makes some people serious money. Number four, doing low weight and high reps builds lean muscle. Being lean is not a matter of exercising, it's a matter of having low body fat, and it's something you certainly won't achieve with a routine based on low weight and high reps. And number five, spot reduction. Fat can be reduced only via proper dieting and not via isolated exercises targeted at spot reduction. And when it is reduced, your body will decide in what way. Our bodies are all genetically programmed differently, and there's nothing we can do to change that, says Matthews. The Real Science of Healthy Fat Loss Now that you know the myths, it's time to get to know the three fundamental laws of fat loss. The first law of fat loss, eat less than you expend equals lose weight. Getting toned has nothing to do with the fads and magazines advice and has everything to do with the simple biology and even simpler math. Energy consumed versus energy expended. Unless your metabolism is very fast, every calorie you give to your body that isn't burned off turns to fat. If you give your body fewer calories than it can burn out throughout the day, then it makes up for the deficit by burning its own energy stores, i.e. fat. The bottom line, it doesn't matter what you eat as long as your calories are right. The second law of fat loss. Eat on a schedule that works best for you. As we've just said, fat loss is much more related to how much you eat than it is to when you eat. Since different people have different metabolisms, there isn't one definite science-backed recommendation to take note of when it comes to your meal schedule. Just adhere to the one which seems to work best for you based on your experience. The third law of fat loss. Use cardio to help burn fat. Even though cardio doesn't equal fat burning fat, it does accelerate fat loss. And if your genetics isn't on your side, fast calorie regulating metabolism, it's a nice way to get into the super lean category, 15% body fat and under. Setting fitness goals to motivate yourself. This is so simple and cliche that you'd think it wouldn't need stating, but it does, says Michael Matthews before stating the obvious. 
Before you lift a weight, hop on a treadmill, or cut a calorie, you must have specific tangible goals set in your mind as to why you're doing it. Setting them is easy as one, two, three. Number one, determine what your ideal body should look like. Don't just throw around adjectives, find a picture. After all, you wouldn't go to a barbershop without one, do you? Number two, determine your ideal state of health. Matthews is along these lines. Oh, have a vital, energetic, strong, and disease-free body that lives long and allows me to stay active and enjoy my life to the fullest. That's motivating, isn't it? And number three, give yourself a reason to achieve these goals, whether it's being better at some of your hobbies or getting more attention from your partner. It doesn't matter. Just give yourself one that will motivate you along the road, because after all, it is a long one. Thinner, leaner, stronger quotes. Building lean muscle is, in a sense, just a matter of following these four laws religiously. Lift hard, lift heavy, get sufficient rest, and feed your body correctly. Cardio can enhance fat loss in two ways burning calories, and speeding up your metabolic rate, but that's it. Research shows that certain activities like watching TV and drinking alcohol can increase, not decrease stress. The most important aspect of meal scheduling is that you work out what makes dieting most enjoyable for you, and that's what fits your lifestyle. This way you can actually stick to your diet, which is what matters in the end. And no matter how ordinary you might think you are, I promise you that you can not only create an extraordinary body, but an extraordinary life as well. And that's a wrap on the book summary of Thinner, Leaner, Stronger by Michael Matthews. Check out our YouTube channel with over 500 video book summaries uploaded previously. Like the video, comment on what you think, and if there's a book you want us to do a summary on, comment below. Check out our website, bestbookbits.com, where you'll find over 500 written book summaries where you can read and download in the PDF, in video categories from biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, personal development, philosophy, psychology, real estate, relationship sales, spirituality, success, time management, and travel. If you're into the audio podcast version, check out mixcloud.com forward slash best book bits, where you can listen to 500 audio book summaries. Follow us on Instagram for daily motivational quotes and book summaries. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something from this. Go out there and become that leaner, thinner, stronger version of yourself. Take care. Bye-bye now.